Throughout history, meat has been considered the most highly prized of foods. In warm and humid tropics, people have time-honored ways of keeping it from going bad. Drying, curing, and the ancient practice of fermentation. Nowhere is life more intertwined with nature than North Borneo's dense jungles. Indigenous tribes who live off the land use nature's work to stretch the bounty of their hunting, husbandry, and fishing. If it can be eaten, it can be preserved. The Kadazandusuns are the rice-growing people of Sabah. Many still live in rural communities. Ms. Lusin owns a catering business in Kota Kinabalu, but often returns to cook for her fellow villagers at Kulu village. Like many people centuries ago, she uses pinongian, a traditional recipe for fermenting meat, but one that uses a counterintuitive ingredient as preservative, the poisonous pangi seed. Pangi trees grow in the mangroves of Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore. Its seed, called glua or glua in Malay, contains hydrogen cyanide, that causes vertigo, confusion, and even death. To rid them of poison, fresh pangi seeds are boiled and buried in ash for 40 days. Smoking extends their shelf life, completing their transformation from toxin to preservative. Sekarang saya bikin ini kulit kerbau. Cuma buka ni ada punya leh, ada punya he. Apa he kalau malai malai? The Pinongian method works great on wild meat. She is using carabao or the water buffalo today. They are a common sight in the paddy fields. An animal so valuable, it's often used in dowries and sacrifices. Saya kasi bakar saya macam ni sampai dia sampai dia jadi padat, nah sampai dia bawa beginilah sampai dia keras. Sebab ini kulit kerbau dia jenis tebal. Kalau yang sapi dia nipis bah. Kulit sapi nipis sama dia cepat hancur. Kalau ini kerbau dia lambat apa? Lambat hancur. Uh. Tough and thick carabao skin is far from appetizing. But boil it for an hour, and the stiff hide slowly turns into a translucent, chewy delicacy. The fleshy kernels of pangi seeds are full of antimicrobial compounds that stop bad bacteria from growing. The early Kadazandusuns living inland were probably the ones who discovered this method of preservation, 
salt wasn't easily available. But today, both are used. A generous coating of salt and a sprinkle of pangi seed powder. Before it's sealed and left to ferment for two weeks. Northeast Thailand. These mountain ranges were once a sea and hold an abundance of rock salt. It's no surprise that the region uses this salty treasure in its local wisdom of fermentation. The young chefs of today are dusting off these renowned techniques and putting their own spin on traditional recipes. With a dry, drought-prone climate that restricts access to food several months a year, fermentation almost becomes a survival instinct. Chef Black makes his own version of the classic meat dish, nem. Traditionally, it's a soured pork sausage found in markets across Thailand. But he uses a different protein. <laughs> For this farm, they, they, they have uh, three kinds of their, the, the, the native one. The first one is the, the Kai Pradu Thang Ram that we, uh, we do like a fermented uh, chicken tendon. The Pradu Hang Dam is a native breed of chicken, popular with farmers for its good growth and chewy, flavorful meat. Chiang Mai's food culture is heavily influenced by neighboring Myanmar and China. Over the past hundreds of years, the Thai ethnic group migrated from southern China to northern Thailand and brought with them the art of fermentation. Chicken nem is a relatively new dish, created in the last 20 years. Chef Black grew up eating it, eventually making it his own. It uses parts of the chicken not normally eaten, like tendons, skin and bits of flesh. They have their lots of meat and not too tough, and they're also like tender. Cooked sticky rice as the source of starch and sugars for bacteria, mold, and yeast. The other ingredients are garlic, salt, and chilies, as well as the chef's carefully cultured starter. It's a rice mold. It's like a koji. This dollop of rice, inoculated with aspergillus or rice mold, is mixed in with the condiments and coaxed into a partnership with the chicken meat. Packed into a sealed bag, 
left to rest for three to four days at room temperature for lacto-fermentation to happen. Lactic acid bacteria consumes the sugars from the sticky rice and converts them into lactic acid. This acidic environment stops problematic bacteria from reproducing. As nem is often eaten raw, controlling the amount of acid production is key to ensuring the final product is safe to eat. Two days later, the translucent chicken has turned creamy white. The pungency of garlic given way to mellow sour notes, accentuated with a sake-like scent. Crunchy, crispy, and with the hallmark sourness of nem. You can create a new flavor, but comfort for the people. Chicken nem is a good side dish when paired with fresh ginger, leafy greens, peanuts, and bird's eye chilies. Deep fried, it becomes sour and umami packed. Great for eating with beer. Two weeks have passed in Kulu village, Sabah. The pungi seeds have infused a delicious nuttiness into the fermented carabao skin. A well-prepared Penongian dish shouldn't give off the pungent smell of rotten meat or fish. Its texture remains firm and can last up to a month before going mushy. Kalau dulu dulu kan ini makanan tradisi ini kerajaan dusun uh, Sabah lah. Kalau dulu dulu, orang tidak esbok. Jadi orang buat begini supaya tahan boleh makan lama. Kadang-kadang kalau yang ngam, mungkin dalam satu tahun satu tahun pun boleh kali kan. Sabahan food has milder flavors compared to the cuisines of the Malays, Chinese, and Indians in Malaysia. local produce. Salt, lime, and the fermented carabao makes a colorful and appealing ceviche-like salad that tantalizes the palate with their signature flavors, savory, sour, and tangy. Opening a little window into a fascinating and ancient culture. In Filipino cuisine, one meat reigns supreme, pork. Pork dishes are heavily influenced by the country's Spanish culinary heritage, and one of the most popular is the chorizo. In the Visayas region, these sweet and spicy sausage balls take the name of its capital and are called chorizo de Cebu. Nine in the morning, the clanging of wheels signals the arrival of the day's delivery. 500 kilograms of the nation's favorite protein make their way into this stall in Tabuan Market. 
Locals like their chorizo fresh, only buying what they consume for the week. So stalls like this make them in small batches to supply various establishments all over Cebu Island. The finest cuts of pork, typically from the shoulder or belly, are selected and ground to the desired texture. Ground meat means more surface area, more chances of bacteria growing. So it's best to process the meat fresh on site. The mince is then infused with a cocktail of spices. Nitrite inhibits the growth of bad bacteria. Salt, a natural preservative. Cooking wine gives it tanginess. Lastly, anato, an orange-red condiment derived from the seeds of the achote tree, imparts the signature red color of chorizo, along with a faint peppery, nutty scent. A good knead releases the protein myosin, which helps coagulate the protein and fat. It's the key to holding the meat together in a matrix-like structure. Twelve hours later, it's time to start stuffing sausages. Instead of the usual elongated shapes, chorizo de Cebu is molded into spherical balls. Many skillful hands make light work. Each worker producing about 12,000 chorizo balls each day. It can be eaten fresh or cured for days, a process that combines drying and fermentation. Lactic acid bacteria present in the raw pork and the environment converts sugars into lactic acid. As it ferments and dries, it becomes more acidic, creating a tangy sausage that lasts longer. To Cebuanos, chorizo is an all-day dish, fried, grilled, and cooked down in its own rendered fat. Most would pair it with puso, rice wrapped in woven palm leaves. But if anything, Filipinos are known for their creativity in the kitchen. At his roadside pizzeria, Tengoy Colmenares honors this local ingredient by slapping it onto his favorite food. Pizza, because I love eating pizza. I'm a pizza lover. <laughs> Best seller, like Hawaiian, pepperoni, 
uh, my timiti that's all meat, and we have the specialty all in also. And of course, the chorizo. When you, you talk about breakfast, chorizo man gina. <laughs> Pizza was Tengoy's comfort food when he worked as a handyman in New York. So what can be better than infusing a taste of home into an international favorite? A Pinoy twist to the classic pepperoni. The Filipino menu offers a little bit of everything for everyone. Drawing from culinary traditions across the globe and stamping its identity on every bite. It's a testament to the resourcefulness and creativity of its people. <laughs> 